Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text once again, Isaiah 25, verse 8. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. Please be seated. I vividly remember the first or the day that Sarah and I bought our first house. That night we celebrated and made dinner reservations for a fancy restaurant in Dallas, Texas. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember the name of it, so I cannot recommend it for that reason alone. But it was the type of place where you've got to make the reservations ahead of time. And of course, they ask, are you celebrating anything? And we say, yeah, we just bought a house. So we get there that night and they have the table prepared for us. And the cheese spread and fruit tray that we had ordered as an appetizer was like you would find at the nicest of resorts. And then, of course, this meal was the type where you have to order the side dishes separately uh, and the steak that you got just melted in your mouth. And then when it came time for dessert, the manager walked up, congratulated us, and then gave us a free dessert to help us celebrate and to thank us for choosing his restaurant that night. When I think back to one of the greatest meals I've had, that is easily one of the top ones. And I'm sure you can think back, and maybe because it's sunrise, it might be hard to think of big feasts like that right now. But we've all had a moment in life where it was one of the greatest meals, whether because it was fancy like that or because of the family that was gathered around the table. We've all enjoyed a nice meal every so often. And today in our Old Testament reading, Isaiah is describing one of these types of feasts. Our first verse, once again, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich foods. A feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And as we hear that, don't skip past this menu too fast. As we see in this verse at the beginning, already we hear how God is providing for us on this day the very best of the best that he can offer. you got to remember back then, meat was not something that was common to eat. And when the people did enjoy meat, they got the lesser cuts. Because the finer cuts, the the best cuts, the the filet mignons, that was what was given in sacrifice. That's what was offered to the gods, or in Israel's case, to, to Yahweh, the one true God. But here, here it's different. God is offering the finest of foods. And remember, back then there was no freezer. There was no refrigerator to store and to save and to allow you to enjoy the sacrificed animal or the, uh, the butchered animal for, for weeks and months on end. You got it then and only then. But here, God is providing a feast to us this day. One that lasts and one that is of the greatest. And so the menu alone, this verse alone, shows how God gives to us out of grace and in complete generosity as he provides for us the best. Now when we think of food today, we recognize everyone has to eat. From the, uh, the smallest to the greatest of living creatures, everything must consume some sort of food. From the lizards and the spiders all the way to us as humans, we got to eat. And in our culture, again, this doesn't necessarily apply, it seems. For in our culture today, we have food in such abundance. It's not always the fancy feasts like we had that one night many years ago. Often we're surrounded and just consuming the leftovers, the TV dinners, and whatever is set before us. But we all must eat. In fact, For many of us, the struggle is not finding food, but the abundance of food. And many of us struggle because we have too much food and consume too much of it. Our culture loves to eat so much so that it becomes unhealthy for us. There's a restaurant, in fact, in Las Vegas, the Heart Attack Grill, that if you are over 350 pounds, you get to eat for free. And then their menu is all based on uh, the... Uh, medical operations. They've got the, uh, for example, the triple bypass burger. 
which has a pound and a half of meat. And not too many years ago, somebody actually had a heart attack trying to consume the triple bypass burger and die. See, today we can go to to Chief, to Walmart, to the local butcher and find a quality piece of meat. Then we can go and get a nice wine at one of the many local wineries and have a fancy feast all by ourselves at home. But the problem is, the foods that we are often consuming run contrary or counter to the foods that God is offering. Instead of what he gives us, we prefer to eat something of our own finding. That's what got Adam and Eve into trouble in the beginning, wasn't it? God offered them any fruit in the garden. and What did they choose? The one fruit that was forbidden. And we too, we get our daily bread as God provides to us all that we need to support our body and soul. But it's not enough for us. We seek our nourishment in all the wrong places. We feast on the grudges that we carry. We feast on the frustrations that we have. We feast on the pride in our own self-sufficiency. We feast on the victimhood that we are the ones that need to be pitied of most. We feast on the gossip that we hear or that we can share, and we crave more and more. We have sipped the, the taste of the temptation, and that has only led to eating more and more of that. See, the food that we often find in this life, it does not satisfy. It leaves us hungry and malnourished. And because of that lack of health, it results in death. Now, as we look at Jesus, we see that he came and lived amongst us. That Jesus as well needed to eat. And and he ate bread and he ate meat. And he ate that uh, just like all the disciples and the crowds around him. But see, Jesus ate something else as well. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, Jesus crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. On Good Friday, just a few days ago, we mourned the death of Jesus as he tasted death and drank it completely for us. And his taste was enough for all people of all ages. And as he consumed that death, he didn't just sip the cup and try a little bit of it, but he drank it completely and swallowed it fully. So that, as we hear about this great feast that God is providing in Isaiah chapter 25, it has come to reality for us because of what Christ himself drank for us. See, when God provides a feast for us, He not only gives us the food, he also provides the entertainment to go with it as well. And through his entertainment, it shows the great power that he has. Again, our text, verses 7 and 8, he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all the peoples, the veil that is spread over all the nations, and he will swallow death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from the earth. See, Jesus tasted death and swallowed it completely so that death no longer reigns over us, has no power over us, so that when we consume those foods that lead to death, when we consume the wrong foods that temptation has offered to us, when death is what we see before us, we see Jesus. And we see the resurrection. And we see the joy of this day that we have life in Him as he has tasted and consumed that death for you. That is why we are here today. That is why we are celebrating that he has removed that and removed the covering that is cast over all the people. Now many of us here today, we have tasted death ourselves. We have experienced the pain of death in our lives as we've lost somebody close to us. And for some of us, this is the first Easter that we've had after death has so closely touched us. And if that's you, it's so easy to then question at that moment, if Jesus swallowed death, why are we still experiencing the power of it in our lives today? Why are we still struggling with its pain today? And really, that's the challenge that we face at this time. 
And that's why we gather to hear the promise of the resurrection again. For we know the victory feast of Jesus has been prepared for you. And yet even now we wait for the final culmination to come where we see the final reality that Christ has already made real. And for some of us, this may be the first time we've stepped into the church in a long time. And if that's you, then hear this promise that God has made for you this day. That Jesus' resurrection brings new life to you now. I remember as a kid, my parents had this large triangle, a dinner bell that hung uh, over the fireplace in our living room. And when us kids were out in the neighborhood playing in whoever's house or uh, wherever we were in the subdivision, When it was time to eat, my parents would step on the back deck and ring that dinner bell, and it was loud that you could hear it everywhere. And that was the call that it was time to come home, for they had to share some news or come home because it was time to eat. And if this is the first time you've stepped into the church in a long time, then hear the dinner bell that is being rung for you, that Jesus is welcoming you back and inviting you to his feast once again. And for some of us, we're here every week and we are reminded every week that Jesus is alive and because of that, we have all the blessings of His glory. And if that is you, then hear that promise again that the seat at the banquet table has been prepared for you. Or maybe you're one who has heard the call of the Holy Spirit in the past, but now it just feels distant. You just don't feel as close or it's not as strong. The faith is not as strong in you right now. And if that's you, then hear this promise that Jesus has not rejected you. But he has tasted death for you and welcomes you back with open arms. And he is calling to you to come back and to experience the food of life that he has given to you this day. A couple years ago, there was a 17-year-old in the United Kingdom who was struggling to breathe and ultimately collapsed. As she was rushed to the hospital, they discovered that for the past 15 years, so almost the entirety of her life, she consumed nothing more than chicken nuggets and a few chips here and there. Sometimes she would have toast and sometimes crackers as well. Her mom said that she refused to eat anything else that they provided for her. And so the doctors quickly realized she was anemic and deficient, extremely deficient in all vitamins and nutrients. And so they warned her the danger of eating just one food and how that was going to lead to her death and a premature death. See, we will hear about the importance of balanced diets and how that balanced diet will give us the health that we need. And that is true physically. But spiritually, there is just one food that we need. And that is Jesus. And on Monday, Thursday, a few days ago, we celebrated that He gave His body and blood for us that we may receive it and find nourishment and strength in that. See, Jesus is the rich food that God is offering in this feast. Not only did He taste death for us, but then He gave Himself to you that we may have strength in Him and we have that faith as He comes to us knowing that we have life in Him and you. You have that new life now in full. So that every time you are tempted to eat all the wrong foods, every time you find yourself feasting on others or even feasting on yourself, in Jesus, hear this promise, you are forgiven. And in Jesus, hear this promise, you have life in Him. And the resurrection guarantees it. Easter is the celebration of that. That as Jesus lives, you too shall live. And today, while we wait for that final feast to come, as we wait for Jesus to return, that we may see fully what those who have already died in the faith see now. As we wait for that day to come, we continue to sing the hymn of praise. This is the feast of victory of our God. Alleluia. And with that, we continue to proclaim the last verse of our text. Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds together with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.